everyone, this is Dr. Sir from Dentapass, your best online mentor for the preparation of INBD, ADAD and AFK exam. Today, student, I have taken a topic of pharmacology that is adrenergic antagonist drugs or adrenergic blockers. Let us see, student, what are adrenergic blocker drugs? Adrenergic antagonists are also called as adrenergic blockers or sympathetolytic drugs because they will block the sympathetic effect created by adrenergics. They bind to the receptor and do not trigger the usual response that has intracellular effect. Adrenergic blocker drugs, they are classified into alpha blockers, beta blockers and the drug affecting the neurotransmitter uptake or the release. So alpha blocker drugs are the zocene like you have doxazocene, pentolamine, perazocene, terazocene, phenoxybenzamine. In the beta blockers, you have acetabutalol, atinolol, propanolol, uh, pindolol, lebitolol, metaprolol and the drugs that affect the neurotransmitter uptake release is guanthidine, recipine. In the classification of adrenergic blockers, they are based on receptor selectivity. Some drugs which are reversible and some drugs which are irreversible blocker, which are not able to dissociate from the receptor. Other class, we have alpha selective blocker, then we have beta selective blocker and the drugs which are affecting the neurotransmitter uptake or the release. Now, first of all, we talk about the alpha blocker drugs in which the irreversible alpha blocker drugs, they are slightly alpha selective for the alpha 1 receptors. Phenoxybenzamine is the drug here. While reversible alpha blocker are slightly more selective for alpha 2 like phentolamine which can be non-selective completely that means blocking both alpha 1 and alpha 2 while tolazolene can be more selective towards alpha 2. Then alpha 1 blocker drugs Prezazosine, doxazosine, they are non-selective blocking both alpha 1 and alpha 2. Then we have the selective alpha 1 blocker which are blocking only alpha 1 receptor like prezazosine, doxazosine and then you have the drugs which are only blocking alpha 2. Now when we talk about the drugs uh, which are used only as well as parenteral, these drugs for example we have phenoxybenzamine, pentolamine, used for treatment of pheochromocytoma, then you have prezazosines. Now, phenoxybenzamine is a non-selective means it will block both alpha 1 and alpha 2. It blocks irreversibly both the receptors. So, phenoxybenzamine, it will decrease the TPR. It can promote the reflex tachycardia. It inhibits the alpha 2 receptor on the heart, increasing the cardiac output. It will pre prevent the vasoconstriction of peripheral blood vessel. Now, when you have epinephrine effect, which is increasing your blood pressure, we can give these drugs which are reversing the epinephrine effect. So, epinephrine is increasing your blood pressure by acting on alpha 1. So, if we give alpha 1 blocker drug, they will block the alpha 1 receptor. So, the epinephrine cannot increase the blood pressure by alpha 1 effect. Rather, it will have the decrease in blood pressure effect by acting on beta 2, which is a vasodilatation effect. So, clinical use of phenoxybenzamine is treatment of pheochromocytoma also for carcinoid tumor by blocking the 5-HT overdose of sympathetomimetic like amphetamine, cocaine overdose also you can use these drugs which are blocking alpha 1 and alpha 2 both. Then phentolamine is competitive alpha and alpha 2 receptor which phenoxybenzamine was non-competitive alpha 1 alpha 2 receptor blocker. This is competitive blocker for both alpha 1 and alpha 2 this drug can produce epireversal used for diagnosis of pheochromocytoma. So, pheochromocytoma as we know, it's a tumor of adrenal medulla. Patient has excess catecholamine that can cause hypertension that can be controlled by phentolamine. Also reverse intense local vasoconstriction caused by infiltration of alpha agonist into subcutaneous tissue during IV administration of alpha agonist. So, you can give alpha blockers to reverse their effect. Adverse effect is always tachycardia arrhythmia. Now, when we talk about the prezazosine, terazosine and doxazosine, they are selective for alpha 1. So, they are only blocking alpha 1 receptor, they are competitive alpha 1 receptor blocker. So, their cardiovascular effect is to decrease your blood pressure, decrease the TPR by causing relaxation of both arterial and venous smooth muscle, cause minimal changes in cardiac output renal blood flow. They are used for mainly hypertension, essential hypertension. Also used for prevention of urinary retention in Prostate condition, BPH, by blocking the alpha 1 receptor, they're decreasing the tone of bladder and promote smooth muscles, enhancing the smooth urinary flow. That's the main problem with the prostate, BPH patient. But the adverse effect of alpha blocker, that is one thing that is very pronounced student, is causing orthostatic hypotension. That means the change in the blood pressure with the postural 
changes when the patient suddenly get up from the sitting posture his blood pressure can drop too much especially elderly males who are on alpha blocker drugs for their hypertension and prostate condition you have to ask them to get up on dental chairs slowly also it can lead to reflex tachycardia nausea vomiting and caution in patient with coronary artery disease which can lead to tachycardia angina nasal congestion beta blocking drugs are all competitive antagonist calcification is based on beta subtype selectivity or partial agonist effect so if you see this some drugs are selective only for beta 1 receptor some are non selective means they block both beta 1 and beta 2 these drugs like you have metoprolol atenolol they are blocking only beta 1 while non selective beta blockers are blocking both beta 1 and beta 2 like propenolol is there timolol is there nandolol is there some of the drug they have combined beta and alpha blocking effect like levetalol is there partial agonist activity they fully occupy receptor with minimum effect may be useful in patient with asthma pinadol pharmacokinetics of beta blocker nandolol is longest acting asmolol is shortest acting effect of beta blockers beta blockers they will block the beta receptor which excites the heart so it will decrease the myocardial contractility decrease force of contraction decrease av conduction slow firing of sa node to so use for treatment of hypertension timolol cartinolol can be used for treatment of glaucoma too asmolol is very short acting drug it control arrhythmia hypertension in ill patient metoprolol and atenolol they are the very frequently used drugs but the problem these drugs although they are good because they are selective only to beta 1 but problem with the propenolol which is non selective block both beta 1 and beta 2 due to beta 2 blocking effect can lead to bronchoconstriction so you cannot use an asthma patient but metoprolol atenolol these two drugs which are selective only to beta 1 don't affect beta 2 can be safely used in patient with the asthma beta blocker toxicity can be effective due to non selective beta blocker effect which can worsen the pre existing asthma and other form of airway obstruction drug affecting neurotransmitter release or uptake so they will prevent the release of adrenaline or noradrenaline from the neurotransmitter that's how they create the adrenergic blocking effect they interfere either with release of neurotransmitter or they interfere with the reuptake of the neurotransmitter into the adrenergic nerve Resapine is one of them, which ultimately deplete the norepinephrine in the adrenergic neuron. Decreasing the adrenergic effect will decrease the sympathetic effect. Mainly used with hypertension patient. Then we have gonadotropin, which blocks the release of stored norepi from the vesicles, but rarely used in treatment of hypertension because it causes orthostatic hypotension and interferes 